I think this has been a really nice conversation. You know, I'm not going to call it a podcast or anything yeah. like that because I love I love talking to you and I love every time you come. You know what? It's really good with you is every time you come, you're here to learn. Yeah. You know, you're not here just and you don't let obstacles get in your way because there's been times where financially you've been at a low. Yeah. And I know your journey. Like that's why I was kind of trying to say before. I remember when you came, I felt like you were this child who had had a bomb put on her like all her belongings all of her you know her home and you just kind of come out of the rubble and you still had like dust on you you know i honestly yeah, yeah, honestly yeah. i remember you that way and i know it's nice to talk about all the strength now and it's good but it's also good to remember like how down you were because yeah. that's the testament of how far you've come so first of all, I'm really happy that we're doing this. Um, I always think about intentions, you know, and making our time productive. Oftentimes when it's about counselling, especially with the Muslim community, they don't often know what it is, um, but also they're reluctant to come. Um, and I would like to talk to you about kind of why that might be as well. Yeah. But before we get started, um, do you want to tell us First of all, we're not going to disclose your name because of confidentiality, but I'm still grateful that you're doing this. And I hope that, you know, your efforts will help lots of other people yeah. um, access help, um, understand more about mental health, mm. understand about self-development, um, try and reduce some of the stigmas around getting help. Um, like I said, I, I do think that people don't access it and a lot of people don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, and I just want it to be a free flow conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so where do you want to start? Do you want to start by telling us kind of what brought you to counselling? Talk about your journey with me. Yeah, well, I'm going to start prior to that to mm -hmm. why a lot of people don't come and why maybe I delayed coming myself. Mm. And I feel like that's because, like personally for myself, obviously there's that Asian thing that there's stigma to do with counselling because once you've been labelled, it's like you've got a mental health issue and you know etc etc mm. and then it's kind of like there's something wrong with you yeah you know what I mean and but then it's the way it's perceived it's not like you've got when you've got a cold you've got something wrong with you you're not ashamed to say that yeah. <laughs> you know you will be happily you know Asians love to complain about everything that's wrong with them <laughs> medically, you know what I mean? yeah. so I think that obviously that's that's probably what stopped me from coming earlier mm. but I think that and I think also for me personally, um, when you're quite a strong person and you come from, you know, I would say quite a strong family and you kind of think of counselling as being weak and you're weak and therefore, you know, and I think that's probably why a lot of people don't like to go because they think that if you say that you've got a mental health issue or that you go to counselling, that you've got a weakness and then somebody may exploit that weakness yeah. you know I think it's like literally a natural you know they say you know, like from the stone age probably that's the stigma that needs to change that actually no it doesn't make you weak it's like you know I always make analogies I'm gonna make them to sports but if you've got a sprain in your ankle you'd go to physiotherapy wouldn't you mm -hmm. and I see it as you know it's not weakness it's just making yourself stronger yeah. and you know on the other side and the third reason might be that counselling is just so overused as well within the Hollywood industry you know I was reading an article and I'm not trying to belittle anyone mm -hmm. But it was something like somebody's dog passed away and they had to go to therapy for that. I can't remember which celebrity it was. And I think, you know, some people just think of it as a joke now, which is is really not. You just have to find, I think, the right person. Mm. You know what's really interesting when you're talking about mental health? Like a lot of the people that I see don't often have a mental health. Yeah, yeah. An underlying mental health problem. So it's not that they're depressed or even yeah, anxious. Yeah. You know, people have relationship problems. Sometimes yeah, people yeah. struggle with things that have happened in their life and they're just struggling to cope. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that there's something wrong with them. Yeah, it just true. means at that time, their coping strategies or their outlook on life or the way that they're managing things mm -hmm. isn't productive yeah, or yeah, is definitely. harming them in some way or harming those around them or they're unproductive. They're unable to do things. Yeah, 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 and both ways, you're right. If If I feel like 
getting help, it's almost like if you go to get help, you're admitting that there's something wrong. Yeah. And yeah. I think that denial part kicks in. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if I don't get the help, then it's okay. Yeah, It's yeah, not yeah. as big as it, it, it is yeah, yeah. or I don't have to face it. Yeah. I don't. And I think part of, of counselling or psychotherapy is to be able to look at yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not at that place of... I will have to make some changes. I think it's very difficult to take that step forward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, for me, I th- when I started, I remember when I started my journey, and I think the reason why I came was, to be honest with you, I felt a little bit lost. I would say that's probably... You, I don't think I had underlying mental health issues, you know me, and I don't think I did because I got on with life quite well, but I felt like, you know, it's going to sound so cringy right now but I wasn't being my best self you know and I know that's so overused but genuinely like I was someone who from a young age had very high targets Mm -hmm. you know I was always very target driven I wanted something that oh there's always things that I want to achieve in my life and you know even the journey that you've known me I'm like that now but when I think I came I wasn't like that I was a little bit lost and I think that made me think I had mental health issues. I was a little bit sad too, if I'm being honest. I wouldn't say I was suffering from depression, but I was, you know, there were things going on in my, my personal life, and which they all obviously interlinked, and that's why I felt a little bit lost. And I think that's where I started, because for me, that was a very strange feeling, because in my life, I will, I've always, this is the next thing, this is the next thing, and I've always got a next step, but at that moment in time, I didn't know. And that's what, I had a lot of unanswered questions in my life and I wasn't sure my coping mechanisms weren't correct. I had a lot of external pressure around me. So there was a lot going on, to be fair. And I think that's, you know, where my journey started from and that's why I came because Mm -hmm. somebody actually recommended it to me. And at first I was a bit like, oh, I'm not sure about that. But Mm -hmm. then the more I thought about it and I think you know, after we had our initial conversation, it helped calm those nerves that I had. Mm, yeah. And that's what I would always recommend to people before you try out any therapist or counsellor, because I've got people that I know who have tried people out, but, you know, they they weren't the right people. Yeah, I think it's so important. <clears throat> I think it's so important you find the right person, mm. because it's... N- the counselling process is the relationship that you build yeah, more yeah. than anything. Yeah, definitely. You no, know, because yeah, the answers yeah. are within the client. You yeah. know, I'm here to facilitate, to direct, to yeah, yeah. give suggestions, to open yeah. up possibilities. But there are possibilities that I see within that client anyway. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, it's not yeah. something I'm bringing up from nowhere. Yeah. And if you're not comfortable with the client and you're not comfortable with the counsellor, it's not going to work yeah. because of the fundamental relationship isn't there. And what you will take away more than anything from the counselling process, what I hope for my clients would be to feel like they were heard, yeah, to feel yeah. like you know they were able to explore both sides of themselves mm-hmm. when, when they feel they're not successful, when they feel like they're failing, kind of where you were at, <clears throat> when you're feeling like you know my world that I knew isn't the world that I know now, like you were saying, the best yeah. self, and you said it's kind of cringy. People yeah. use that a lot in the self-development world, yeah, you know, <laughs> my best yeah. self, my best self. But I, it's a good term. It, it, when I hear best self, I think I want to be at a place where I'm functioning, you know, I get up in my day, I'm able to do things in a positive manner. Yeah. And yeah, I'll have moments of sadness, but that sadness shouldn't stop me being able to achieve my goals and yeah, even yeah. to dream, to have aspirations. Definitely. And what can happen is when something hits us in life, you know, sometimes it's a death, sometimes it's the breaking up of a relationship, sometimes it's, you know, even after somebody's had a baby and things yeah. have changed so much that you begin to lose your identity, you begin to lose kind of, you tend to question yourself. Yeah. And at that time, it's, it's really good to explore kind of what's changing, what's new for me, yeah. what can I learn from this? Um, because some of us will take that and we won't know what to do with it. Yeah, and yeah. then we go to family and friends and... I really want to make that distinction for counselling. I think you'll know this. <clears throat> if you were to speak to uh, 
a friend or a family member, you don't get the same experience. Yeah. You know, because the family member or the friend can never be completely objective. Yeah, I agree with that. They don't look at you that yeah. way. So you can still talk to them and that's why I always say I'm not a friend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because if I'm a friend then there's certain things I won't say to you. Yeah. Or if I do you might take offence, you might be like, Oh you're my yeah, friend and yeah. how could you do that? Yeah. But as a therapist I can actually say, Look, you know, what about this? <clears throat> Something that maybe nobody else can question you on or make you confront or put in front of you and then step back and, and safely get you to look at that part of yourself. Yeah, definitely. Like, I agree with that. That even if you've got friends who are very blunt, to be honest with you, you I think that they always bring their own subjective yes. perspectives into it, even in regards yeah. to life. And, you know, maybe because they had their experiences, mm -hmm. whereas I think counsellors and therapists have seen a plethora of people mm. so it's not as subjective and they're trained not to be subjective mm. really you yeah. know and I say that's that would be the distinction that friends are always there to give you advice yeah yeah definitely. whether we think it or yeah. not there's always an element of advice because we yeah. can only go from what we know our world yeah um and that's why I think it's so powerful for the client to be yeah. able to solely have a light put on them yeah, this is yeah, your yeah, world definitely. what are you going to do and it's did you find sometimes when that happened, because I find other clients that like, it's going to be quite scary as well, to have that put on you and, and knowing that, you know what, actually it's me that has to make these choices. You know, I think we were talking about this at one yeah. point where when initially when you come in, it's everybody else. Like it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, a couple, it's my husband and my wife. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's somebody at work, it's the work experience that's yeah, the problem. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever it might be, it's, it's outside of myself. Yeah. How did you find that process? Where were you at when you first came? So, I didn't find it scary, mm -hmm. but I found it strange. Okay. I think just because of the type of person that I am, you know, I'm a bit of a problem solver and I like to get answers to everything. But, and I think that that was, you know, for example, work situation, okay, but I don't understand why this is happening. I need answers so I can solve this situation. But I think that, in a way, when it was the answers are with me, it was, you know, it was quite a revelation, to be honest with you. I didn't think, like, wow, because I always thought the answers were with other people, you know, like, this friend is doing this, or my, this work colleague is doing this, or my brother, or whoever it might be in your life, or your sister, and they did this, and this made me feel really angry. And I think what really helped me with therapy is when you said things like, not just, you know, your typical, how did that make you feel? How did you cope with it? And I think that's the main thing that I would say is a distinction in my therapy sessions, because I've been to counselling with other people, and it was very much, how did that make you feel? And I was sick of saying how it made me feel, to be honest with <laughs> yeah. you. Like, somebody swore at me. It obviously, it didn't make me feel very good, did it? But I don't think it, it's true, to be honest with you. It's such a cliche, because... You know, if somebody comes and slaps you, everyone's going to feel the same, aren't they? Nobody's going to say, oh, didn't it hurt? Mm. But I think that how your reaction to it was most beneficial because then you can use that, you know, in life, the same situations keep cropping up, whether one situation happened with one person at work and then it happened with a family member or whoever it might be. But I think learning to deal with those situations helped me the most. And I feel like... I know, I think it's been two years now that yeah, we've been, enough, yeah. you know, alhamdulillah, yeah. and I feel like in those two years I've grown so much, and to be honest with you, all my friends that are very self-aware know that, mm. and they, they actually say, you know, mashallah, you've changed so much, and, you know, they come to me for advice, and even people that are older than me have noticed, and they'll say those certain things to me because they know that my mind is a lot more open mm. than it used to be. How do you find with that process, you know, um, in and terms of... Sorry, I was going to say it's a long process as well. People, and I think that's why people count a lot of ther therapy out because I stuck with it, you know, yeah. two years is a long time. Yeah. And some people think that, because I think we've had, is it three sets of sessions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three lots, yeah. And a lot of people would be, a lot of people would say, oh, after six, seven, I'll feel better now. Yeah. You know, but it doesn't work no, like that. Doesn't. You might feel better one day, but then you go back into your old habits. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I really agree with you. I mean, for some people, they can come in short term, just do a, a little fix, yeah. and they're done. 
um, and I don't agree with that's why I'm in like I went for private practice yeah. I really would you know I really encourage people to stay the long haul mm. um, and we always came up with creative ways to do that for you yeah, yeah. but I'm so glad that you did do it because by doing that look at the reflection you're able to have yeah, even yeah. that like you're, you're already saying how your relationships are, how you are as a person, your sense mm -hmm. of confidence, your sense of identity. Yeah. And that does take time. And mm -hmm. you know what I find really sad is we, we spend so much money on holidays. Yeah. And I'm not saying don't go on holidays. Yeah, it's really yeah. beneficial. I love holidays. Yeah. Um, and we spend money on, on clothes and things like that. And we can kind of see the value of that. But working on ourselves, investing in ourselves, yeah, definitely. People, don't, people don't see that as an investment. Oh. It's like it repays tenfold. Like first of all, you meant you know health is the most important yeah. thing, but also it just makes you. I feel like I'm a lot more productive, and I feel like the possibilities are now endless. And you know you can't put money on your brain, can you? Mm. To be honest with you, you no mm. matter how many computers or whatever you buy, robots, nothing can put the same value on it as a human person no, I, and I feel like I've invested that money in myself like how I would do with the business because you are your own business essentially yeah, aren't you yeah and I, I so agree with you because even though I'm a therapist I always seek out help yeah you know if that's a mentor if that's counseling yeah that's not because necessarily there's anything wrong with me but because I don't want to stump my growth if I'm not yeah, if I'm yeah. not growing then I'm dying, essentially. Yeah, That's yeah. how I see it. Yeah, if I'm yeah, not yeah, learning definitely. something new, yeah. and as human beings, we're changing all the time. Mm. And it's true. If I'm not the best in my life, and I'm not showing up the best in terms of my mental health, my well-being, um, my relationships, and how I'm, um, how I'm dealing with things, then everything else falls apart. Yeah, yeah, and yet yeah, I'm trying to invest in everything else, like the holiday and my children and yeah. you know, my clothes. But the the person that shows up the in the person inside, I've not done anything with. I'm the same person that I was ten years ago, and I, because I've not grown, I've probably been dying because everybody else is yeah, growing. Yeah. Yeah, so you're yeah. kind of falling behind in on two folds. They are what I would say are quick fixes. Yeah. You know, I want to go on holiday. I want to buy this bag. I yeah. want to buy these clothes, and I want to buy this car. Mm. They are literally just quick fixes. You'll feel that for a short while, yeah. but then. It doesn't last long. No. The, the process of actually looking at myself, looking at a pattern, looking at why I do a certain thing. Yeah. And what you were saying, and I, I did laugh because when, when people start counselling initially, it is kind of the classical question, how do you feel? Yeah. Um, but for me, I've been doing this for so long, and because I've gone through lots of different types of therapy as well, mm -hmm. I try to do a combination of things, and yeah. Islam is so important, mm -hmm. you know, if I, and that's why I, I enjoy working with Muslim clients, mm -hmm. um, and I sincerely enjoy it, because if yeah. you even think about you and I, when yeah. we talked about things, so many of the things relate to our deen. Yeah, yeah, when we're not well, like, you know, like for example, myself, I went through domestic violence, you know, and people often say, oh, um, it doesn't affect your deen, but it does. Because, for example, if I'm a woman that's scared of her husband coming home, I'm fearing him more than Allah. Yeah, Most yeah, of the time definitely. I'm thinking about what he's going to do next. Yeah. And my focus should be on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think if you, when we're going through this process, what happens when people are going through sadness or a difficult time, it can affect their deen. Yeah, it can affect their deen I, because I agree they, with that. I think that, you know, for people to say that, certain situations happen and they don't affect your deen mm. or iman to be honest with you it's it's such a stupid comment yeah. to make because yeah. you know even in the quran Allah Sandal says that i'm going to test you yeah. with death you know wealth mm. all these things loss of somebody yeah. or you That's know something. i can't remember the four things from the top mm. of my head but if they weren't going to affect you then why would allah think that that's such a big yeah. test you know and it is you can't deny that losing somebody makes you feel a certain yeah, way of course. or you know you know I always think you know parents who have lost a child um my a family friend of ours lost their son mm. and he was their eldest son and he mm. died all of a sudden mm. in a procedure in a hospital and it's a big test for them you know even several years later they're still crying at night mm. and you know it has affected them a lot and you can't say that that's you know no. it has an effect on your iman I'm not saying you're always you know, it's justified to start committing sins, but it is a test. Yeah, and I think that the other way of looking at it as well is when people say, um, oh, 
well, you shouldn't be sad. You shouldn't be depressed. Yeah. And and why why have you why have you all sort of got depressed? You, you, which means your iman you is think low. About heaven, it will yeah. make you nice. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Work. And that's why I love this process. For me, yeah. it's when I'm with somebody. I want. I, I have a few goals in mind. One is that they feel better. They feel yeah. like there's like I I care, which I genuinely do. Yeah, like I yeah. don't want. That's the first thing. Before you can heal somebody, you've got to care. You've got to be like. Wherever they're at is where they're at. And yeah. it's not for me to judge and say, well, oh, you should have dealt with that better. Oh, I can't yeah. believe that that's upsetting you. Yeah, it's yeah. not for me to know that. Only you know that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But once we've got to a place where you're safe and you feel like, you know what, this person is okay with where I'm at, then it's not enough just to say, how do you feel? And how can we change that feeling? Because your behavior as well. And, and I use a little bit of CBT yeah, to help yeah. with that. Um, but I also love the fact that we've got Islam in yeah. there because Islam has so many of those answers, yeah, yeah. Um, like dua and how to reconnect. And sometimes, you know, I've, I have so many clients who have gone through something really bad and we're going through the process and it always hits on Allah at, at some point in that yeah, process, yeah. those that see it through. Yeah. And I love that because I had another client who was at the point and she said, you know, I used to talk to God all the time and I realised I don't do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I felt like that. Too. Yeah. Because you're going through such a test, you don't yeah. see it at the yeah, time, you're yeah. just surviving. Yeah, you're yeah, going definitely. through such a pain, you're just it's like surviving. Mode, yeah. yeah, and then if you, this is why I love this space, because you come away from all of that chaos, yeah. you come into a safe space, yeah. you allocate some time to yourself, you get to really slow down and then observe the world. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's probably been the biggest change for me, you know, observing, slowing down, mm. you know everything not being as chaotic because I feel like my life is generally quite chaotic just because mm -hmm. I've got a number of things on mm -hmm. you know they're not necessarily all negative but there's a lot there so I think you know my process like I say it's not been it's been a gradual process mm -hmm. and it is dealing with things because things will always crop up you know even in my own personal experiences how I dealt with things a few even a few months ago to how I dealt with them now, I remember speaking to you about this, that, uh, you know, a podcast that you'd recommended. And I say that's one thing that I always, why I always recommend you to my friends is because I know that you're very well read. And for me, that's a very important thing because it shows someone's professionalism, you know, because I like to read and to me it really shows that that person knows what they're talking about. And that's what I, you know, if somebody was to come to me and ask me something, I don't know, about politics or whatever, you know, whatever. Sports. Sports, <laughs> anything. I want to know that I can say that clothes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. want to tell them everything I can. You know, like, yeah. for example, me and my friend were shopping yesterday. And she's like, I wonder how that much that handbag is. And I was like, it's 1600 She opened it up and it was around that price. And I just knew. Yeah. And I think that's why I come to you because, and that's why I recommend you, like I said, because you're always reading and recommending. And that helps you grow and be better. And and for me, you know, like I was, what, you, what we were talking about, you recommended this podcast. And it said something about being reactionary. And I was like, wow, that's me. And, you know, this is two years on. I'm still realising things about me. And I really started to be very mindful of that mm -hmm. and how I react to situations and making sure I react to the right situations in the right way. Don't you think that this process really helps you? You know, this whole idea about self-care. Yeah. And particularly around women and yeah. how we keep talking about self-care and looking after ourselves and empowerment. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that this process... in one of the results of the process is this ability to take care of ourselves. Yeah, Just in yeah. what you were saying, like, I could listen to that and I could tell that I'm reactionary. Yeah. Look at the ownership of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, to where we might have been six months ago or a year ago, yeah, not necessarily yeah. you, but somebody could be at that stage and yeah. think, I'm not reacting, they did that. Yeah, yeah, you even know, a few why are they, ago, to be honest yeah, with you. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Yeah. It's not, not on me. Yeah. But how beautiful it is like, for you to be able to say, um, I notice that I'm reactionary and it's a process, like the, yeah. the grace that you're giving yourself, it's yeah. not like a quick fix, yeah, you know, yeah. we're creatures yeah. of habit, yeah. we learn things about ourselves and then we observe and slowly, slowly each time something comes up we think, ah, I can do a little bit something different, yeah. but the self-care that you've got, can you see the honour in yourself yeah, to yeah. say, I'm not going to react to a thing, I felt like you rose up 10 feet just yeah, by saying yeah, that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. and I think that 
initially for me it was well I'm going to react to that because I'm not going to let that other person mm. think that they can do this to me or say this to me yeah, yeah. and again you're putting you know it's it's really ironic you're putting you're trying to make yourself powerful but you're giving that person all the power yeah. to make you feel like something so now I'm just like okay well they want to do that they can waste their own time mm. you know it happened to me quite recently where someone did something and normally I would just go and say X, Y, Z and, you know, blazing with fire <laughs> because I was just like, don't you think you can do that to me? But mm. then I was kind of, I got on with it. I didn't even let them know I it got to me mm. and I did what I wanted to do anyway. Yeah. You know, somebody asked me to do something this day and I said no and then they did something to kind of trigger me and then I did it when I wanted to anyway and I didn't let them know that I got triggered and I think that that for them was probably like more annoying than yeah. you know that because they probably wanted to see a reaction out mm. of me but the fact I didn't give that mm. and it made me feel so mellow and calm initially I was a little bit annoyed like anybody would be but the fact that I consciously thought about it honestly it did and I felt like this is about me yeah. and I think that's the main thing yeah. and you know it seems quite selfish but it's not really because it's not like you're saying, and this is what people think actually, this is another misconception. People take, it's all about me to an extreme. Mm, yes. You know, I'm, somebody can make one mistake, I'm going to cut you all about, out of my mm. life because this year is all about me. Like, mm. no, that's not right either. Yeah. It's all about me. It's again, you're giving that person power again. Yeah, you are. You know, it's all about me is, I'm going to change my habits so I feel it's better. better. Yes. And it's a conscious effort to think about things. And yeah. even, it doesn't even mean you necessarily have to cut people out of your life. It can just be, I'm going to utilise my time a little bit better. Yeah. It's making positive changes for yourself. Yeah. Those decisions that impact you. Yeah. And I always say be selfish a little bit. But yeah, yeah. We, we take that word to mean that we're being cruel to someone yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this is the That's balance. That's not what it is. No, yeah. it's not. It's making, and I want to go back to God, like, in the end, we're, everything we do is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. You know, it's not about the person. Yeah. And when we can get to that place where, you know, I'm deciding not to have a fight with you for the sake of Allah, but I'm still going to do what I want to do. That's not arrogance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely. just a choice of yeah. either I can use my energy towards you yeah. and then feel rubbish anyway because yeah, I've got yeah. angry and upset and sad. Or I can still use energy, but within myself and say, what's the choice I can make for myself yeah. right now that's going to benefit me? And it's nothing to do with you. Definitely. And when you let that go, it's so liberating. It definitely. I think it all, it does, and then that is being selfish because it becomes about you mm. and your intentions become about yeah. you. You know, like certain things, like I, I'm a big giver. Mm. And I think that a lot of people said, don't do this because this person kind of takes the mick out of you yeah. and you takes advantage and you should have let them do that so you should do nothing for them. And this person was a family member and at first I started to do that but I didn't feel good about it. But now, you know, I kind of turned my intentions around and made it about me that I'm going to do this in whatever capacity I can do it but I'm going to do it for the sake of Allah not because, you know, I want them to think that all oh, look at this person, I still, they, you know, I'm not very nice to them, but they still do things for me. I'm like, no, you're a family member, so I'm going to do what I want to do for the sake of Allah, because I'm getting reward for it. And, you know, it is very liberating to be able to think like that. But again, that comes back to really analysing that, who is it about? Is it about you or is it about them? One thing I, I know in my earlier days, there was a lot of people that, you know, if, if there was a charge, it would be, oh, well, why is it not free? Yeah. And I did that for a while. But what I found is the people that got it free often didn't benefit as much. Yeah, yeah, and definitely. that's part of that is because of our attachment to money. Yeah. OK. And when we give something of ourselves that we value, like you work hard, you, yeah. you know, you work nine till five. Like you were just talking earlier, like come home and we're shattered and yeah. we don't want to do things. And it's true. When yeah, you, yeah. And then depending on your relationship with money, if you don't make that money work for you, if it doesn't serve you, then what was the point of yeah, it? Yeah. So in a way, it's that higher esteem to say, yeah. actually, I've earned that and I can decide what I do with that and I'm going to put it into myself, not for anyone else, because it is a very personal process yeah, and it yeah. takes a lot of courage to say, I'm going to do that and, and I want to do that for myself. And a lot of people will be like, 
or I, we can't afford it. And I see them, they're, even six months later, they're still in the same conflict, yeah, they're yeah. still having the same problems, they'll message me and say, we're still struggling. And, you know, I always say to them, you need to come back because you know, unless we're sat in this process, in this space, even if I messaged you a hundred messages, yeah. it would not be the same as me being able to sit with you, yeah, yeah, go definitely. through what you're experiencing, look at your thoughts, yeah. look at your feelings, look at your behaviours, help you to see that, you know, and help you to see what's an alternate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can't do that, I can't do that over messages. I feel like the first, I would say, the 18 months or so, mm. maybe even more, it was more therapy. Yeah. And it was looking at things, how, you know, like you said, that's where, how do you feel and... What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Yeah. Those things are very important. And learning about yourself. You learn a lot about your patterns yeah, in those yeah, early definitely. days. And Why is this happening to me? Yeah. What part did I play in it? Yeah. What can I let go of? How can I react to yeah. it? You know, how yeah. can, how, is this going to take over my life? Yeah. And those are the sort of things that if you don't come to therapy for they cause anxiety and they cause mental health problems. So like you say, so you might not even have mental health problems, but because you're not addressing it, they will cause mental health problems mm, yeah. because you're overthinking. And I know that I'm a big overthinker. Mm. And, you know, it. that's what causes anxiety because you constantly, and you've not got a remedy to it. No. And I think that that's why counselling helps, or therapy, sorry, mm. because I've been to counselling and I really don't think it's very helpful. Mm. And, you know, and I've had two or three counsellors that I tried out and they just weren't able to dig deeper. Mm. It was always what's on the surface. And to me, that wasn't very beneficial. Mm. And, you know, it is very individual. I feel like, because I'm quite self-aware generally, they were telling me things I already knew, and I was like, what a waste of my time. You were telling me things that I already know. Yeah. You know, I needed to dig deeper mm. to see what I could change. Mm. And if you've come here, it's a very humbling experience in a way yeah. as well, isn't it? Because yeah. you've got to be able to think, you know what, this is what's good about me. This is what, you know, I'm not going to say negative things, but this is what I could improve. Mm. And this is what is leading me to have X, Y, and Z problems. I think, and I think with yourself, what was really good is we were able to kind of look at patterns, so look at kind of what was existing at the moment. So X is happening, yeah. and when X happens, you do Y and Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we kind of were able to identify that, and then how you reacted and what you felt during that. Yeah. And then once we realised that these are my patterns, mm -hmm. then you were able to say, okay, what can I do differently so that I create a different result? Yeah, yeah, different. And it wasn't easy. No. You know, like I went through, you know, obviously you know, the situation, I went through one situation where it was with another person mm -hmm. and changed those habits. It gave me, you know, it wasn't easy. They would get very angry. Yeah. They would, you know, this was somebody that I couldn't really cut out of my life. Mm -hmm. And then my relationship with that person has also changed mm -hmm. because I was willing to go through like all the bad things. Yeah and handle it like a mature person because the truth is we can't cut somebody everybody out of our lives we can't cut our parents out we can't cut our grandparents out we can't cut our siblings out we can't cut you know our inter our first family immediate family out so i think learning how to deal with it is better it's better for them as well and i think that that's what people aren't willing to do every hurdle you know and i think it's really opened up my mind as well and sometimes people might not like it, but, you know, there's certain people that I know where I'm like, I'm sick of hearing your crap now. I'm mm -hmm. sick of hearing you being the victim. Yeah. And it got to a certain point where I just thought, no, that's enough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even when it comes to certain the boundaries, your boundaries seem to have changed yeah, a definitely. lot. Yeah, definitely. You know, even the way I say things, mm -hmm. I've somebody said to me something the other day and I said look if you're going to say something negative I don't want to hear it because that is one of my goals in life mm -hmm. and I don't want to constantly hear you say negative things mm -hmm. about that situ about that thing mm -hmm. because that's going to in my subconscious mind make it negative yeah. and I don't think it's negative mm -hmm. I think there are lots of you know that I'm just going to be quite open and say it was about marriage mm -hmm. and they say, oh no, marriage is negative, marriage is this, marriage is that. And before that, I used to feel like that yeah. too. Yeah. And I said, no, do you know what? I'm going That's to get your, married yeah. and you're making this a negative. 
and I actually said, if you're going to say something negative about it, I'm just going to put the phone down. Yeah. And I wasn't rude about it, mm. but I just needed to let it know that I don't, yeah. that's not good for me. And it's not good for anybody. No, it's not. And that'll help them realise yeah. as well. Because the more we say something, we manifest it, it becomes a reality. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We have a choice to look at something in a positive light yeah. or a negative. And, a marriage is a, a, a variety of those things. Sometimes yeah, yeah. we have the tough days, sometimes yeah. it's good. But if you are somebody who's looking at marriage as something that's negative or something that's harmful or something that causes pain, and then you're hearing it over and over, yeah, yeah. it's just priming you to believe that as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you have a choice to say, look, that conversation's not happening. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, back to the Islamic concept, if marriage was all back and day, Allah well, wouldn't tell us to get married. No, you know, and it wouldn't be such a beautiful thing. No. So I think that, again, it's about your choices, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that you've got to be... Whereas before, if I hadn't come to counselling, I maybe would have listened or would have, you know, taken it away yeah. or soaked it in. And without me realising, I would have had those assumptions. Sounds like what you've done is you've kind of created space for yourself to... Um, I imagine it like this garden where you decide like who comes in, yeah. what's growing in it. Yeah. You know, you're very protective of the space that you've created for yourself, the work that yeah. you've done. Yeah. And you know what happens when people respect themselves? Other people respect them. Yeah, yeah. And it's a big thing for women. They come in and kind of like in relationships or with yeah. friendships or with parents and they don't often see it. They're like focusing on their husband for not giving them something yeah, or their yeah. friend or their parent. Yeah. But actually it's within ourselves. Like yeah. because you have that now that you're clear on, look, these conversations, I don't really agree with it. I, I believe that marriage is something that's blessed because Allah SWT wouldn't have given it to us. Yeah. And you want to kind of foster that in your world yeah then when something else comes along like it's like a weed that you think you know what i don't want that growing here yeah yeah. and yeah, look definitely. at what that's going to do to you at first it's scary because sometimes you lose friends yeah you know and sometimes you do have to kind of go through that and it's scary yeah. but what you end up with is almost like a, a, a hand-picked garden for yourself like yeah, these are the plants i want in here yeah. this this is the building that i want this is how i want it to be and you get to create that life for yourself yeah, yeah, and it's a better yeah. life like you said before the better version of yourself and in once you've created that world for yourself where the boundaries are good and i know what i want and i know what i don't want then you go on to do great things yeah, yeah because definitely. you can be productive and i think that it's not just about one situation either it's not just let's say for example, a marriage situation, no. you then bring this into your work life, you bring mm. it into your personal life, yeah. you bring it into goals that you may have, mm. whatever they might that may be. So it's, you know, in a way it's amazing. It's one recipe and you can just bring it into so many yes. different because types it's you. of dishes. <laughs> you see why it's so important? Because it's you that we're working on yeah, and you yeah. are in work, you are in the relationship, yeah, you are yeah. in your friendships. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're the one and that's why it's like, the, when, when I keep going back to that, that investment in me, yeah, yeah. I'm worth it. Like, it's, so what if I have to give something each week so that I get some space for myself and I get to look at me? Yeah, yeah. If, you know, we're battling in, in the outside world of and not having that, but then when it comes to being able to get that help, we self-sabotage and we say, we haven't got the money, I haven't got the time, yeah, I've got yeah. no one to have the kids or yeah. I haven't got time off work. And actually what we're doing is those excuses just probably for that person fitting into their patterns anyway. They don't want to get the help because being in that state, for some reason, gives them some sort of benefit. Like being in trouble or being in a, in a happy marriage, they get maybe a reaction from their spouse or yeah. they're li reliving their parents' you yeah, know, yeah. marriage. And they continue to do that. And I think you're just a beautiful example of saying, you know what, I'm choosing to grow out of this. Yeah, I imagined yeah. you to be in, honestly, in like a, when I look back at your journey when you first came to me, it was like you'd come out of, you know, like a small child who's had, had a bomb put on yeah. her world, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I was actually going to say that before, that, sorry to interrupt you, but I was going to say that, you know, when it comes to the time thing, it's not a quick fix mm -hmm. because obviously in my profession, I deal with children and have a lot of children around me at home and I see how they're constantly changing you know I see how they when you look at a child you know really the, their personality is ever changing within six months a year you know you see children at, at seven and at nine they're completely different people even with my own nephews and nieces I see that and that's how I imagine coming into therapy that you have to understand you're always changing yeah. so you need to keep going yeah. to keep 
you know, building and building and being better. Yeah. And as an adult, you know, it's harder and it's un yeah. like, it's harder you're undoing to a lot change. more. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like when you're at least when your child is clean slate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to actually take longer. And I you know, I really sat back and I thought and you know, obviously I like listening to podcasts and I do a lot of research and stuff and I see so many successful people seek out therapy and I thought, well, they're doing it and they are very successful and, you know, obviously they don't have the Islamic side of them but they don't just do it for spiritual mm. ways, they do it for um, to manifest and to for their businesses to, create, to grow, yeah, to, to, create to creation. Word, yeah. So obviously, you know, we look at the spiritual side as well. That's why we choose to actually chose to come come to a Muslim counselor. Mm. But if they're doing it and it's working for them, then why can't we do it? Do we yeah. not want to be successful? We're supposed to be the best of people. Yeah, we're supposed to be, you know, the best in what we do, and we're failing. Mm. You know, I agree with you. I think. I think this has been a really nice conversation. You know, I'm not going to call it a podcast or anything yeah. like that because I love I love talking to you and I love every time you come. You know what? It's really good with you is every time you come, you're here to learn. Yeah. You know, you're not here just and you don't let obstacles get in your way because there's been times where financially you've been at a low. Yeah. And I know your journey. Like that's why I was kind of trying to say it before. I remember when you came, I felt like you were this child, who had had a bomb put on her like all her belongings, all of her, you know, her home. And you just kind of come out of the rubble and you still had like dust on you. You know, I honestly, yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah. I remember you that way. And I know it's nice to talk about all the strength now and it's good, but it's also good to remember like how down you were because yeah, that's yeah. the testament of how far you've come. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, it's not just that you were, you, how you're showing up today is yeah, how you were all the yeah. time. It wasn't. You questioned yourself on things. There were, you were heartbroken. There were lots of dynamics going on, you know. Um, I was very vulnerable, I would say. You were very, very, very vulnerable. Very, very vulnerable yeah. yeah, you questioned yourself so much. Yeah. Like, is it me? What have I done? What could be different? Yeah. There was a lot of like self blame mm. for something that was actually you was nothing to do with you yeah. in the sense that it was, you were not to blame. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I saw you even with that still coming back every week, still sitting here, sometimes just crying it out, sometimes making that small little shift. And you're right, it's like a, like a, 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 a snowball effect. You start off slow, mm. you know, it takes that time to build that ball up, make it stronger. And then once it gets going, it's much faster. Yeah, yeah, like now you're picking up concepts so quick. Like kind yeah. of you talked about the difference between therapy yeah. and almost coaching now, yeah, yeah. which is like, I want these goals, I want to do these things. Yeah. Because you've had that period of building that snowball up, you know, to to strengthen you, to look yeah. at your vulnerability, to say that I'm safe, to say that actually it's not my fault. Or even if there was parts that was my responsibility, I'm able to look at that in a way of a kind of responsibility rather than blame. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I love that about you and I just wanted to say that to you because you are a testament to, to anybody out there who wants to get help or is struggling. If they took some of the steps that you take, they would be where you are. Honestly, yeah. it's not anything to do with me. Yeah. I'm here to help, I'm here to listen, but it's ultimately to do with the client. If they're willing, if they genuinely are prepared to be vulnerable, to look at themselves, to say, I'm gonna do the work, you yeah. know, and I'm gonna keep coming back and I'm gonna invest in myself. I care about myself enough. Yeah. You know, that I don't wanna go through this pain. I wanna be closer to Allah SWT, because we talked about that last yeah, week, yeah. Um, around setting goals now, yeah. how, to, how to like strengthen our du'as, yeah, how yeah. to build our tawakkul in Allah, because yeah. it all affects it. When something goes wrong, your tawakkul changes, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you're hit by something, so you're shaken, yeah, 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 you know, and to still hold on to the rope of Allah and say, yeah, look, yeah. I, I, and, and oftentimes we do, we, we think we don't pray as much, or maybe we don't read Quran as much, or, yeah. because we're sad. Yeah, we're yeah. in that place and having somebody who's for me this is why islam is so important with my clients being able to still keep them connected to allah because ultimately it's not me or them it's allah that's going to heal them yeah yeah definitely you know? so i think i think my summary and i'd like you to finish off but i wanted to finish with that which is just a testament to you and just to thank you because i know how far you've come and i yeah. genuinely when i describe when I, when I described that scene, that is how I remember you. I remember you coming into my room and I remember how, like, almost like, what do I say, what don't I say? And slowly, slowly you started being, 
like the vulnerability, but you started to say things that were really vulnerable. Yeah, you started yeah. to trust yourself to say, yeah. look, I'm going to say this. Yeah, I have yeah. this thought that you might not tell anybody else. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like an insecurity in ourselves yeah, yeah, that we don't yeah. want to tell anybody. But the moment that we share it with, in a safe space, it's like, ah, that's not as scary now. You know, it's not as a bigger thing for me. It's not as, you know, I, I saw it as something really bad in myself, but actually it's not so big. You know, or the perspective changes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I and I loved that about you, honestly. And I'm gonna get you to kind of, or us to end this on, if you can summarize, um, I don't know, some of the best things, or not the best things, maybe, what would you say if you had to summarize to somebody who would want to access counseling or want to access therapy? What would you say to them? I would say that, you know, like you said when I first came in. I, I'm honestly, I think for a good few minutes we were just silent, you know, if I'm being quite honest, because I didn't really know what to say. Mm -hmm. And it's about, you know, being in a safe space. And I remember, like I said, I think you could just tell from my eyes what was going on in my life. I think I'm one of those people, everyone always says that to me, you can tell how you are by just your eyes. Mm -hmm. And I would say that it is a, re it takes a lot to come. You know, sometimes it's like going to the gym, I would say you drag your feet you don't want to go in and then when you're in the car you're just like can I be bothered going in and then you go in and you're like can, do I have the energy to exercise it's literally you know at the start it is but I would say after one I after two or three sessions I really wanted to start coming because I started to feel better and I think when you're going through something that is the initial change it is about you and sometimes when you're stuck in a situation, it people make it about, this, this is the difference between going to friends for advice and going to a therapist. Because, again, when I was kind of dwindling off into making about somebody else, you brought me back. Mm -hmm. And I think that was probably the best thing that you could have done for me. It's like a doctor. Sometimes you're not going to like the medicine that they give you. But ultimately, it is the best. That, you know, it might be sour. You don't like the taste of it. But it brings you back to you and it will heal you. And I feel like it is in really small steps and that's what people don't understand. Like it was just, initially it was, I'm just gonna change this one thing. Yeah. It's one tiny little thing. And then it was another tiny little thing. And then it was another tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. And they were the steps. And sometimes we would work on one thing for a good three or four weeks. Yeah. And it takes a lot of patience and, you know, I don't want people to look at me now and think, oh, you know, she seems so great, so positive, and I'm going to go in there and it's not going to be like that. It might be like that for mm -hmm. you if you just want to enhance and become coaching. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a place where you, I was, where you were really down, really lost, you didn't know what to do, you have to have the patience to go through and I feel like the effect that you have is a snowball effect that you'll have for the rest of your life yeah. you know inshallah because then it remember after that situation another situation happened and then I handled that a lot better mm -hmm. and I feel like now when things happen I can really reflect on things and I feel like that's how counseling has helped me a lot I don't forget the journey that I started from I think okay this happened and that was similar to what happened a year and a half ago and the way you know it's like a toolbox of stuff you've got that yeah, you can keep getting back to it's an accumulation isn't it and subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trains our brains like that mm. you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our brain brain is so powerful and if you listen to any scientist they will say the same that your brain has a power to do so many things mm. and you know I watch a lot of sports and I see that all of the greatest athletes, you know what they talk about? They talk about visualisation. Yeah. They say, I visualise becoming a champion. I visualise winning. I visualise going into there every step. I already had it in my head before I even did it. And I think that that's what therapy has helped me. It's helped my brain. And it's helped me go back and it's given me so many skills, I would say. It's like having got another tool in the toolbox to deal with situations. Because situations are going to come up in life, whether we're 40, 50, 20, 60, you know, we've got parents, they get older, they get ill, we learn how to deal with things. And I think that therapy is just a tools for the rest of your life. And it's really up to you if you want to become better and deal with situations and how you deal with situations, which will in turn 
changing the dynamics of your relationship with so many different people, whether that's with your husband, your immediate family, your friends, your colleagues, you know, it really helps, you know, that's what I would say. And that's what I say to my friends who go to therapy, who might, you know, some of them are not with you. And I keep saying to them, you know, okay, you're making it about, you keep saying this about your husband or your dad or whoever, but bring it back to yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what, I think, and I think Alhamdulillah, the best thing, and I'm going to end with this, is coming back to intentions, that I feel I can, hack, and I can help other people as well, because, you know, even though they don't have, some people might not have enough problems that they think that they can come to therapy, or they just don't want to, so when they come to me for advice, I say, oh, well, you know what, my therapist said this, and I think this really helped, you know, a friend actually retalked about manifestation of du'as, and the wording of them and I spoke to a friend yesterday and she said something like you know I want this and I said well you're not saying it right and I said instead of saying I want peace in this relationship you should say my relationship is going to be really good and you know I can use those skills to help other people and so it's not just yourself that you're helping it's so many other people Thank you. And you know, I want to thank you. And when I do think about my journey, I do get quite emotional because it has been a long one. Alhamdulillah.